Today we get into the best controller settings on Apex Legends, specifically for any of you new players out there. But first, for a chance at 1,000 Apex coins, let me know your favorite legend in Apex Legends in season 13 in the comments down below. Okay, so recently I've been making the transition from mouse and keyboard to controller on Apex Legends. And if you're wondering why, in all honesty, in my opinion, being good on controller is just easier to game with. Now I'm not just saying controller is easier than mouse and keyboard, I'm just saying for somebody like me kicking back relaxing and just enjoying a video game is much more simpler and easier with a controller than using mouse and keyboard i just want to be able to kick back relax and enjoy my time while i game so that's why i'm making the transition also aim assist is beautiful anyway since i have been playing mouse and keyboard for so long i had to make the transition over to controller and that's why i've come up with the best settings and alc options for controller players if you are making that transition hell even if you're an experienced controller player let me know how these settings worked for you all right diving into the settings let's check out a couple gameplay options that i really think are important to your settings now some of these are going to be subjective for different players and how long you've been playing so feel free to use whatever options you want these are just what i use interact prompt style is actually a big one to me i personally use compact versus default essentially by using compact when i walk up to an item it just gives me that little box to let me know that this is a backpack compared to using the default option it gives me more information about the item but as you see on the screen here, compared to the compact version, I think default creates the potential for more screen clutter. So I don't like to use it. Crosshair damage feedback X with shield icon, damage number stacking, ping opacity faded, obituaries on, mini map rotation off, weapon auto cycle on empty. You want this on? This will automatically switch weapons if you run out of ammo. Auto sprint on, uh, of course. Now I personally use jetpack control on hold. Now as somebody that's been using Valk a lot, the reason I have jump packs on hold versus toggle is because I recently got a cinch gaming controller which allows me a button on the back so that way I'm able to hold my jump pack and still be able to move my joystick to turn in different directions I will say however if you don't have a controller that has these options using toggle is great to still be able to turn while you use Valkyrie's jetpacks which I think it is an amazing feature that you should use incoming damage feedback 3d taking damage closes death box or crafting menu basically when you're in crafting or death box if you get shot by somebody by having this enabled or disabled the game will automatically kick you out of the death box or controller since i'm not as fast as looting with mouse and keyboard i currently have this on off so that way i can't armor swap when i need to stream mode anonymous mode those are really up to you i currently have them enabled these are my current custom reticle settings and i think they're perfect in any lighting situation or scenario that you put yourself in colorblind mode everybody just switch it to tritinopia unless you actually are colorblind line and just thank me later now going into the controller settings i use a stick layout of default interact reload button tap to use and reload crouch button toggle aim button on hold survival slot button i have on off and the only reason i do that is so that way i can inspect my weapon to potentially trick shot for the last kill so maybe you should have this off trigger dead zone set to none menu cursor speed now due to the fact that i have a ps5 controller and from what i've been told ps5 controllers have tighter sticks compared to xbox controllers i actually turn up this menu cursor speed here now going into the movement and aiming section i do use alc settings and we're going to dive into those settings here today before we dive into their movement dead zone set the small inverted look off and vibration off i personally don't feel like enabling controller vibration helps in gameplay in fact when i get custom controllers i make sure they remove the vibration out of the controller in itself all right diving into my advanced look controller alc settings now what i want to make very clear about these settings today as I have these dialed in to have a tighter aim. Since I'm trying to get better on the joysticks and get used to controller, I want to make sure that I have as little sway away from the center as possible. So even seeing me do something as simple as a 360 or looking up and down, specifically looking up and down while I'm aiming or left and right while I'm aiming, you can see that my settings are rather tight and that allows me the ability for now to dial in and get used to aiming with a controller. Now, I will say over time, you're probably going to want to slowly up these settings as your muscle memory develops more with your thumbs on joysticks. But even lately, after reviewing some of the best controller players in the world, I've noticed that they even 
can use tight settings for themselves as well. I think having that control is just so helpful. So obviously you want custom look controls on. I set my dead zone down to 4%, my outer threshold up to 4%, and my response curve down to 5%. Personally, I've dialed in these settings here to be able to have a little bit more control at range on a controller. Now you can change your per optic ADS sensitivity based on whatever site you are using as well. But I currently have this off while I'm trying to get used to that muscle memory with the controller. Now my yaw speed I have at 270 and pitch speed I have at 128. Yaw speed determines how fast I can turn left and right and pitch speed determines how fast I can look up and down without ADSing. I like to have these a little higher so it gives me the options to still be able to hit fire while also being able to move if I need to run or aggress push into a fight. Turning extra yaw, I have a 150. Turning extra pitch, I actually turn up to 50. Now what this means is when the stick input is at its maximum, it's how much more quickly the view looks up or down. I then go to 0% on my turning ramp up time and turning ramp up delay. Moving into my ADS settings, this is where I like to keep things a little tighter as you can see across the board. ADS yaw speed determines how fast you can look left or right and pitch determines how fast you can look up and down. Again, while aiming down sights and using controller, I wanna be as tight as possible on my object. So I do 86 for the yaw speed and 60 for the pitch speed. Now I will say that these speeds over the last week and a half have gone up a, a few extra points like every single day. I'm just slowly but surely dialing in my settings as again my muscle memory gets better on controller. ADS turning extra yaw down to 20. ADS turning extra pitch down to zero. ADS turning ramp up time I put 5% and then ADS turning ramp up delay I have at zero. And then target compensation on and melee target compensation on as well. Now, video settings are really subjective for whatever your PC or build is, but one thing that I want to encourage everybody to disable is FOV ability scaling. Now, this drastically affects two legends, Octane and Bloodhound. And what you'll see here is when I stem, the FOV scaling is disabled, so everything on my screen looks the exact same compared to when I'm not stemmed. So again, standing still looking at the object in front of me, I hit stem and nothing changes other than the fact that I'm stem. However, when you have this enabled, and most of the time it's enabled by default, once I hit my stem, you can actually see my screen warp and it makes the target in front of me tighter, which does affect your sensitivity. So this is one thing that you want to make sure you have disabled. So these are the settings that I've been utilizing on controller for me to help improve my gameplay. I'm curious, how many of these settings today were close to the settings that you already had on your setup and how many of these settings do you think i should change to maybe help out with my gameplay at the end of the day this is just my experience these are just the options that i've been using to adapt and move over to controller all right guys make sure you are all joining my discord link is in the description of the video like comment subscribe turn on those notifications that's all i got for you guys today i'm out peace deuces